Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts letters. Welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all the food and drink featured inside. If you missed last week's recipe for our Hogwarts house inspired homemade fudge, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. But it's Magic Monday, so let's see what's waiting for us today. Christmas is coming and the snow is starting to fall, so it's time to get inside and enjoy some magical wizarding food. And if you don't want to miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, let's get back to the book. Okay, so Harry has just finished unwrapping his fudge and then him and Ron work their way through the rest of the presents. We've got some chocolate frogs and some every flavour beans, which we made earlier in the series, so check out the playlist link for those if you want to catch up. Harry also gets himself an invisibility cloak, which belonged to his dad, and a cute sweater from Mrs Weasley. And on the next page I can see our next recipe. Harry had never in all his life had such a Christmas dinner. Looks like it's time for the main meal of the season. For this recipe, you will need a turkey, and I'm using a boneless turkey crown, 50 grams of butter, salt and pepper, a teaspoon of rosemary and thyme, a few cloves of garlic, a quarter teaspoon of mixed spice, and one orange. For our sides, we're also gonna use some baby carrots, baby potatoes, parsnips, and Brussels sprouts. For our stuffing, you will need one onion, four sage leaves, 80 grams of breadcrumbs, salt and pepper, and one egg. And for our vibrant orange gravy, you're gonna need some of the stock from the turkey, one onion, some cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of corn flour, salt and pepper, half a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and half a tablespoon of tomato puree. I think it's officially okay to start counting down to Christmas, which means this episode is perfectly timed if you're thinking about what you're gonna make on the big day. Now the book does actually tell us a bit about the sides that's gonna come with our turkey Christmas dinner, but we have made some of them earlier in the series, such as our homemade sausages and our minted peas. So I'm gonna mix things up a bit and give you a little twist on the Christmas dinner, but it's super simple, and most of it you can make in the same tray, which is gonna save you time and the washing up. But if it's Christmas and we're sitting down for dinner, that means we will need to put on our Christmas hats. Let's get to it. The first step is to prepare our compound butter to season our turkey. So for this, we're gonna add the butter and all of our seasonings into a bowl. That's our salt and pepper, rosemary and thyme, garlic and mixed spice. We're also gonna add in the zest of some of our orange. All you need to do is work the seasonings into your butter. Be careful not to overmix it though because the heat of your hands will start to melt the butter. Once it's nicely combined, you want to get yourself your full turkey, or in this case, I'm just using the crown, as that is the best fit. Give it a good covering with your butter, and if you remember the trick from our Perry chicken recipe, you want to place some of that butter underneath the skin that's gonna seal in all the flavor and let it go straight into the flesh. To prepare the roasting tin, I'm gonna drizzle in a little oil and then slice up the oranges from earlier and place them into the bottom. The turkey then goes on top and you're good to go. Once it's nicely covered, you want to wrap the turkey in cling film and pop it into the fridge overnight or for at least four hours. When you're about two hours from being ready to serve, you want to take the turkey out of the fridge and allow it to come up to room temperature. If you've gone with a boneless turkey crown, then pop this into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about an hour and a half. If you're going for a whole turkey though, make sure you check the packet for the instructions to make sure that it cooks throughout and nobody gets an upset stomach. Okay, so while the turkey is cooking in the oven, we're gonna move on to making our roast vegetables. And as I mentioned at the start, we're gonna do this in the one pan method. So you wanna chop them up nice and small so they cook evenly, and then you only have to wash up one dish. Preparing your veg is super simple. All you need to do is get yourself a chopping board and then slice up all of your vegetables into a nice even size. That's our carrots, potatoes and our parsnips. Now we do have some Brussels sprouts but they cook a lot more quickly so we're just gonna add them in later. I'm also cutting up an onion and some garlic as we're gonna roast these and then use them in our stock. 
Line up all of your vegetables and then you want to season them with some salt and pepper and I've also put some honey over the parsnips and the carrots. Don't worry if this goes into the other veggies though, it's all going into the same place, your stomach. Once they're ready, pop the tray into the oven with the turkey for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, it should have started to go nice and golden brown. So we're gonna put our Brussels sprouts in. You can also season these with some salt and pepper and chili flakes. Then it's back into the oven for another 10 minutes. So that's our turkey and our vegetables in the oven. But before we move on to making the gravy, there is one more thing we need to for our Christmas dinner and that is stuffing. But of course it's my Harry Potter kitchen so we're going to mould these stuffing balls in to stuffing opening balls. Stuffing is super simple to make. All you need to do is chop up your onions and your sage. Place a frying pan on a medium heat, add in some butter and then we're going to fry off the onions and sage for about five minutes. At this point, you can also season it with some salt and pepper. While that's frying off, you want to prepare your breadcrumbs. I've just taken some bread that's been left out for a day or two and then popped it into a food processor. Add that into a bowl along with your egg and then pour your onion mix over the top. Give this a good mix and then season it with some extra salt and pepper as required. All you need to do next is get yourself your baking tray and then drizzle some oil over the top. Shape your stuffing into your lightning bolt and then pop them into the tray. You might need to do this in pieces and refine it to get your desired shape. Those need to go into the oven at 180 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so that's all the food in the oven. So the only thing left to do is to make our gravy, which is gonna beautifully finish off our meal. And we have been using oranges to get that nice, sweet Christmassy flavor. So we're actually gonna make an orange gravy, which is gonna look very vibrant and magical, but trust me, it tastes amazing with the turkey. This is how it's done. While the turkey is cooking, all those juices from the meat and the orange will begin to bubble. So make sure you baste your turkey regularly to spread those juices and make sure it stays nice and juicy. Once the turkey's finished cooking, we're gonna remove it from the roasting tin, but keep all of those juices because they are packed with flavor. Get yourself a frying pan on a medium heat and then add in your roasted onions and garlic. Stir these around and as they have been roasted, they should be nice and soft and break down slightly in the pan. Season your mixture and add in your Worcestershire sauce and your tomato puree. Then you want to add in your stock juices and allow that to deglaze in the pan. We're then gonna make a quick slurry out of the corn flour and water and then pour this into our stock to thicken up the gravy. You can add extra water or corn flour to get your desired consistency. Once you're happy with it, all you need to do is leave it to simmer for five to 10 minutes and allow those flavors to mature. Now, one of the hardest parts about making the Christmas dinner is timing all of those different components to make sure it comes together nicely and everything is cooked at the same time. But quick trick for you, if you have a small oven or you can't get the timings quite right, feel free to take stuff out of the oven. And then while you're making your gravy, pop them back in. And that way, when the gravy is nice and piping hot, your food should be warm enough too. And they'll come together into a beautiful Christmas miracle. That is pretty much all for this recipe. So now it's time to plate up. The turkey is the main event. So we're gonna begin by slicing that. Then we're gonna take the rest of our ingredients and begin plating them up by putting the roasted vegetables around the plate and then the turkey on top of that. The pièce de résistance is our lightning bolt stuffing. So that's gonna go on last. And we're gonna serve that with some of our fresh orange gravy. So there you go. I don't want a lot for Christmas, but I definitely want this roast dinner. So 
So our Harry Potter Christmas dinner is complete. And let me know down below in the comments, what is your favorite part about your Christmas meal? I'm torn between the roast potato and gravy, but I mean, together, they're pretty amazing. So I might just go make myself some now. And while I'm there, leave a comment down below, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get alerts every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'll see you 